Hello folks, today I'm going to share with you my thoughts on the 5 gigabits per second USB-C to Ethernet adapter from Mintholtz. This device will give your computing system a connection that is 5 times faster than the old 1 gigabit connector resulting in faster file transfers, lag-free streaming, and high-performance gaming. And the disclaimer before I get to the review is that we got this product from the company for evaluation. We are not getting paid for this review. The company is not influencing the review, and all of the opinions expressed in this video are our own. Not much to unbox here, it's basically just the adapter, and then paperwork that consists of a card with the URL for driver download. And then you have a safety information sheet, and lastly this tiny manual printed for 15 year olds with 2020 vision, who incidentally don't read manuals. Taking a closer look at the adapter, at the end of this nicely braided cable is the USB-C port. And then at the dongle end is the RJ45 port for your Ethernet cable. The dongle comes in an aluminum enclosure, which is not only nice for electromagnetic shielding and heat dissipation via these end vents, but it also gives a better feel than the other cheapo plastic dongles. Lastly, this unit comes with an upstream power delivery port with 95 watts of power, so it's enough to power a laptop. The small detail is actually a really important feature as USB-C ports are premium on a laptop. And if I used up one port for this Ethernet dongle, that means I will have one less port for something else like power. So having this PD port is a really great design win. What do you need to make the best use of this 5 gigabits per second device? The most important thing is that you use a CAT6A or higher speed Ethernet cable to make sure that you can get speeds above the 1 gigabits per second. CAT5E and CAT6 apparently won't cut it if we look at the chart here. You will also need a switch that supports above 5 gigabits per second, which means you need a 5 gig or 10 gig switch. And of course, the devices that you are trying to access need to be capable of speeds at 5 gigabits and above. I'm too cheap to pay for home internet that is faster than 1 gig, so I won't be doing any internet testing for speed. But if you can see here, the speed test does show the adapter pretty much maxing out my connection at almost 1 gigabit per second. What I do have is a NAS which has a 10 gig connection, so I will be doing testing directly between my computer and the NAS. The computer touts that this adapter is plug and play, and yes, I just plugged it into my Windows 11 machine and didn't have to load any new drivers or anything. It worked out of the box. So that's pretty much it for setup. So once I connect the adapter to my system, how do I tell if everything is set up correctly? Well, I can go to my control panel and then to the network and sharing center. I will see that my Wi-Fi speed goes between 1 gigabits per second and 1.2 gigabits per second. When I select my Ethernet connection, we see that the speed is at 1.0 gigabits per second, and that's because I'm connected to my router, which is only running at 1 gig, so the speed can only go up to 1 gig. But if I connect my system to my 10 gig NAS, then the speed goes up to 5 gigabits per second, which is what the adapter can go up to. You can also get the same info from PowerShell using the get net adapter commandlet, the line of interest is the one here that says Realtek USB 5 gig Ethernet controller. And it does confirm that the speed is running at 5 gigabits per second. Another way to tell how fast you are running the adapter is to watch the two status lights on the adapter. If you see a yellow light, that means the connection is running at 2.5 gigabits per second or below. If you see the green light, that means the connection is running at 5 gigabits per second. To see how fast this adapter runs, let's look at what the transfer speed for using my existing 1 gig connection to the NAS. I'm going to copy this large file from my desktop to the NAS. You can see that the speed is around 90 megabytes per second. The speed goes up and down a little, but averages out to be about 90 megabytes per second. Now let's go to the 10 gig connection to the NAS. I'm going to copy the same file from the desktop to the NAS. And we can see here 
Now the speed averages to probably about 450 megabytes per second, which is pretty much five times the 90 meg uh, that we saw using the one gig connection. So this guy is in fact getting uh, the five times speed bump, which is really nice. Another method that I used to test the network speed was to use the iPerf3 program. I started the iPerf3 server on my NAS and then using the Windows subsystem for Linux. So the command I used was iperf3-c to specify this is the client and then 169.254.154.9 which is the IP of my server. And then lastly, dash lowercase p32271 for the port on the server. The results came back at about three and a half gigabits per second, which is definitely not the five gigabits I was hoping for. The interesting thing is that I kept running this for a few more times after I turned the screen recording off and the speed actually went up to four point something. But when I tried to start recording again, the speed dropped back to the threes. So the good performance numbers appear to be very shy and elusive. Then I connected the adapter to my Linux system and ran iperf3 again. The numbers came back with about 4.63 gigabits per second. And as you can see, I was able to screen capture these numbers. And while I had my Linux system connected, I copied files from the server to my local system using the rsync command and the speed came back to about 494 million bytes per second or about 470 megabytes per second. So that's really good performance on the Linux system. And lastly, I did the same test again on a Mac running iperf3. This time I used eight parallel client streams. The numbers came back to about 4.4 gigabits per second. So pretty consistently high speeds across all three platforms of Windows, Linux, and Mac. The last thing I did was to run rsync to copy a file from the server. This came back at 129 million bytes per second, which is much slower than expected. I'm guessing that is because my Mac is pretty old and the device is slow. So I tried writing to a RAM disk, which did not make much of a difference. So this adapter performs fantastic and it was easy to set up. And at under $30, it's very price competitive with the other five gig adapters out there. I really like the USB-C power delivery port as that is invaluable for those moments when you are just running out of ports. And as I showed earlier with running iperf 3, the adapter worked with Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, all without having to load any drivers or do anything special to get it set up. One feature that the box highlights is the ability to handle jumbo frames of 16 kilobytes. On my Windows system, when I looked at making the modifications to the jumbo frame on the adapter, all I saw was the option for 4088 bytes or 9014 bytes. When I changed this to 9014, and then I made the same updates on my NAS to match, there did not seem to be much of a difference in performance. For another video on hardware devices, watch this video here. For more tech videos, make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.